So we're gonna we're gonna start um, animal tracks and signs, and here we go uh, with the first one. Uh, this bird has been observed um, on bird walks. Now it might be a trick question, but this is one that was in the um, UEC um, Insta, so I kind of know about this one. So answer the question. You got seven. You got five seconds. So click on something. Hurry, hurry! Oh my gosh. You're running out of time. Ah! All right. So um, the pine siskin. So this was this is like if you've done any of the bird walks. I know um, uh, there was some. Um, and once I saw it on the UEC Instagram, I was like looking for them everywhere. Um, and it's related to um, uh, the masting um, high mass that we had last year, low mass that we have this year, and they're coming down looking for food. Um, I thought that was fascinating when I read that on, um, from you guys. So um, this all ties in. So that's like a direct observation, right? When you go out birding, you're looking at birds, you're identifying those birds. Um, so next, who took Maggie's coffee? All right, so um, one of these people took Maggie's coffee. So it was Ethan, Tim, Ken, or Megan. Um, and there's, there's an obvious answer here. Um, so got five seconds uh, to go. Okay, so um, the answer was anybody except Megan because Megan would never take Maggie's coffee. Um, but certainly Ethan, Tim or, um, well, Ken I had here um, would certainly take Maggie's coffee. Now, so this is getting into um, more like, um, something happened, but you don't have the direct evidence of it. So you have to uh, do some detective work and we'll get into um, that. Uh, so, um, all right, now we're gonna get into some tracks and sign stuff. What made this mark in Washington state? All right, so this is a, um, some animal sign from Washington state. So who do you think uh, did this? So I've got 13. I think when I get up to 18 um, answers, I can um, go. Well, we'll just let it count down. Um, no biggie. So you got five seconds left. Let's see how people did on this one. Um, yeah, so that's that's what bear sign looks like. Uh, so bears will um, kind of like scratch on wood. Uh, you see the claw marks there uh, showing, showing the bear. So a lot of people got that, 15 um, of you. Um, all right, um, we've got a streak of three going. Um, what likely left this track in Belize? Okay, so here's a, here's a track here. Um, this is in Belize. Um, I could give you a hint if you need it, you might not, but there's three toes here. All right, taper, good. Um, and so that 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 helps. I mean, that you'd have um, there's not a lot of animals running around there with three toes. It's a it's a perissodactyl, odd-toed ungulate. Um, Belize was a, kind of a key, so this is probably Beard's taper. Um, and uh, again, so uh, you, you have to know a little bit about where where the track was um, uh, to maybe answer that question. All right. So the next one, we're almost done. Um, what likely made this mark? This is in North Carolina. Um, North Carolina. Um, good, yeah, so that's a deer rub. Uh, and so deer will take um, take their heads and kind of like rub um, um, on, on a tree to, to mark territories or to do um, any other number of um, things. But, uh, but that's deer sign. All right. Um, all right. So we got citizen defiance is crushing it. Chad's like right behind. And you got Brittany. All right. So a couple more. What likely left this print in Big Bend National Park? Big Bend, if you don't know where that is, it's um, 
So I'm the bend of the Rio Grande on the Texas-Mexico border, one of my very favorite places in the world. Good. So that was a that's a cougar. We'll come back to uh, we'll come back to um, uh, that print in 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 the seminar, uh, and then the last one. Um, what likely did this? Um, just right outside the main campus of the Urban Ecology Center. Uh, and I took this picture a few years ago. Um, okay, that was quick. So beaver, all right. Um, and again, so that's that's animal sign. Let's see, so did it, citizen defiance wins. Uh, seven out of seven, whoa. And, and so the tiebreaker here is gonna be just on time, um, I think. So a lot of seven out of sevens, good for y'all. Um, and I am going to move to um, my uh, presentation here. And as I was doing this, um, Maggie was asking for a title and I'm like, you know, we have this concept like leave no trace, like a wilderness concept, right? If you go into the wilderness, you don't leave any evidence that you were there. Well, that kind of defeats the purpose if you're looking for tracks and signs, you're actually looking for evidence that something um, was there. A lot of time that evidence is poop. And so I kind of, of course, we're all famous, we're all familiar with the famous Rene Descartes saying in Latin, pupito ergo sum, I poop, therefore I am. Um, actually, I think that's how it goes. I took that at UW Milwaukee way back in the day. Okay, that's not it, obviously. So actually what is going on here um i must have been working here all right so um scat animal scat is a is a typical thing that we look at we know if a deer has been in our backyard in the summertime um if you see a lot of deer scat or rabbit scat is, is very um uh diagnostic my wife um, last uh, couple weeks ago found a single rodent scat um, in the house, a, one scat. I don't know how she found it, um, but I investigated. I figured out, um, I, I, it took me a while, but I figured out where to put the trap and it was like up in a ceiling. Um, so it wasn't actually getting down into the house and I got it like in a day, but my wife found it. Um, and knew that it was, um, there was something amiss. And we haven't had a mouse in the house in 20 years, uh, but she totally found it. A um, couple things um, on, on animal tracks and signs. And I, I should say, I cannot, for whatever reason, um, see the chat. So if there's a question in the chat, um, I won't know what it is. So. <laughs> Chris, we'll, we'll ask you the question if we see it in the chat. We'll, we'll yeah. Oh, wait. You know what? I just moved the the bar of people here, um, and it's just hiding behind. And I there's got to be a way here. I'm just going to shrink my window over here. There we go. Now I can see the chat. Okay. Um, and um, I agree. Um, uh, community science is something that um, I learned from from uh, you guys. Um, and uh, there is a, whatever, we'll get in, we don't have to get into that discussion, but I totally use that a lot now, if it's community-based research. So anyway, uh, one thing when we're talking about tracks and signs is even the best um, uh, naturalists are um, gonna be wrong, okay? So professional naturalist, if he's honest, will freely say that sometimes he is stumped by what he finds. And so part of the fun of, of this investigative work um, is just being baffled. It's like, what, what is that? Um, and what is that is, is, a, is a fine um, fine thing. And I'll tell you what, I'm gonna, um, I, mean, I use Prezi, but I was looking at this beforehand. And so I think I didn't do a reset here. So I'm just gonna do a reset. There we go. Um, and then Mark Elbrock and is one of my favorite um, per, uh, uh, authors on uh, tracks and signs. And he said, tracking is the interpretation of in indirect signs. Uh, it's detective work and sometimes we're wrong. And so, um, and, and that's okay. Uh, uh, it's not about getting the right answer. It's about engaging 
with the process of that of that detective work. Okay. Um, now, other forms of indirect evidence that are a little bit easier to wrap your head around are camera traps. The animal was there, but it's gone, but you got a picture of it, okay? Um, this is one as, as, uh, someone sent. It's a cougar that was in Wapaka County, and it, it actually um, walked through Portage County by our field station. Uh, people got it on cameras, and before camera traps, it's like, that uh, probably wasn't a cougar. Uh, but now we, we're fairly confident that we've got cougars moving through the state because there's a lot of people with camera traps out. Um, I have a camera trap out. It's all part of a large, um, and again, I would say this is citizen science um, because it's, it's larger than, unless we think about Wisconsin as a community. Um, but there's thousands of cameras out that are part of Snapshot Wisconsin. And if you don't know about Snapshot Wisconsin, um, you can actually participate by going to Zooniverse. If you've, if you've done Zooniverse.org, uh, go into Snapshot Wisconsin, and you can um, interpret pictures um, as part of that as well. Uh, this is one I submitted from our camera here in Schmeekly uh, that they used as a holiday picture um, on their on their blog. So it's um, it's it's a lot of fun uh, just to to engage with that. But it's so I know it's out there because I've got pictures of them. Um, talk a little bit about the effects of substrate. Um, and so here's some tracks that we're doing a bio blitz on Chambers Island with the Urban Ecology Center. Um, and so these are fisher tracks. Now, I wouldn't say that this is a diagnostic fisher track. The only reason that I would even know this is a fisher track is because they had a trail camera out there and took a picture of a fisher that day. Um, and so there's, there's just a one poor, very lonely fisher that got stranded out um, on Chambers Island, probably in a big ice year, um, probably a male, probably the loneliest male fisher in the world. So, um, but the track itself um, on hard sand wasn't really easy to see. In kind of a soft um, sand clay, you're gonna get a really nice track. And so this is that same cougar track uh, that we took a picture of in Big Bend. We were hiking off the big rim, or the south rim, it's called the south rim. We are camping up there with my students, about 16, 17 of us coming down and we, we saw this um, print. And this is a very fresh print from that morning. This is the direction of travel. And so when you see a print, there's a lot you can get out of it. Um, so it was going in the same direction that we were going. So we were all a little bit nervous <laughs> that there was a cougar um, just ahead of us um, on the trail. Um, but also um, that you, you could say this is, the right, this is the right front foot and then the right hind foot um, is pretty much just right on top of it and in front of it. So it's, um, uh, and so we'll get a little bit into gates um, and the way animals move um, uh, as well. So the first thing is, ah, that's a print. The second thing is what kind of print is it? Um, and then there's all sorts of other things. What direction is the animal moving? Is it moving fast or slow? How big is the animal? Um, um, you know, those types of things, okay. Now, one thing I will um, um, recommend if you, if you start getting into this, this is my favorite book. I, um, I've got his first edition too. Um, and so Mammal Tracks and Signs, it's actually like half off. On, I just bought it half off on Amazon, uh, but it's beautiful. It's, it's, I love this book. Um, and, uh, and so how do I know it's a cougar? I mean, I, I just look up, he's got it organized by species account. So he's got, you know, um, the, 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 the front foot is larger than the hind foot. This is the shape. Can you see the claws or not see the claws? Um, and then different gates and different different patterns, what it looks like in snow, possibly, and versus other substrates. Um, and then the other thing I like about this that I'll talk about is he's got some different gate patterns. So what I just showed you was a direct register trot where the, the animal is moving in this footfall pattern with the hind foot stepping on top of the front foot in, in that pattern. So you have um, uh, so you can get a lot out of that. And then these are the kinds of 
of, of critters that that use these types of gates. So they're, they're called gates. Oh, that's nice, Tim. Thanks for the link. All right. So uh, I was told that the name of this series was like Backyard Naturalist or something like that. So I was like, oh, I'll go to the backyard. And um, so my backyard, I would say this is hmm, my favorite mammalian resident of my backyard. So does anyone know what this is? Let's, 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 let's use this chat feature to see if um, someone can identify that. Nope, okay, just thought I'd try it out, okay. So that is Ictitomys tritus and lineatus. That is the 13-lined ground squirrel. Um, and I have a family um, in my backyard um, that's resident and I am so, it means that I have something that I learned from Jeff Kennedy at UW-Milwaukee was on natural, um, natural lawns and how to maintain like do natural gardening and natural lawns and, and horticulture. If any of you knew Jeff Kennedy back in the 80s. Um, and so yeah, it's a chem-free lawn, dandelions and clover. I've got oregano in the lawn because I made a mistake and planted it in the garden. And so it smells like pizza when I mow and it's, but my, I've got a lot of very happy residents in my backyard. So this is one of them. I'd say my favorite bird is the brown thrasher um, that comes back. Um, every year. So just, yeah, it's great. So I know what's in my backyard. So I think that's the first thing. I've got a candidate. I've got a list of candidates so that when I start doing um, my tracking, I know what's out there. Um, this is a, this is an easy one. This is um, someone that's been going down to my compost pile. That's my job. So this is a uh, my size nine Keens. Okay. So that are just going back and forth um, all winter. When it gets real deep, I'll actually shovel down there. Um, so that's uh, uh, a snow a couple weeks ago. I was worried that we wouldn't get any snow and I wouldn't be able to get any pictures for y'all, but uh, we got some really pretty snows. Now, the best time, um, so my wife said, why don't you take a walk now and get some pictures? And it was like four in the afternoon. I said, no, after a snow, um, the best time to go is like early in the morning because then you'll pick up all the nocturnal animals um, and you'll get there before the tracks are um, kind of like messed up. So, um, so I went on like a, an eight o'clock in the morning walk um, or went out in the backyard and, and just took some pictures. And so these are just pictures that I took. And to, oh, who was it Marilyn? I can't remember who was talking about um, snowshoeing and the subnivian, but um, this is one of our residents that, um, that we want to think about um, in that niche. Uh, so this is a meadow vole. Now, it's weird because I don't necessarily see meadow voles um, just running around, but I know they're there. They're, they're fairly, um, fairly common uh, member of the small mammal community. Um, but this would be um, a meadow vole track. Um, and again, I'll, I'll get a closer up picture here, but this is very typical of a meadow vole. So you've got um, there in the summertime, they, they run through, um, they'll, they'll build a little tunnels through the grass. So it's more of a meadow, right? The meadow vole. It's more of a grassland species. Um, great population of them up at the UW Milwaukee Field Station um, up on uh, Blue Goose Lane. Uh, where they've got some nice meadows and um, I'm sure they're, uh, yeah. So they'll pop out from under the snow and then they'll just kind of like dig these little tunnel things. And then they'll start um, engaging in what's called like a loping um, gait. So they'll just kind of, they don't want to get all snowy. So they'll just kind of like, just kind of lope, okay. And so that's what the lope gait looks like um, for a meadow vole. Um, and if you have a ruler, it's about four, four and a half inches. And so um, if you're gonna go out tracking, I would recommend um, that you carry, um, carry a ruler and I'll kind of give you another um, hint at the end. All right, so you can kind of uh, measure the length, you can measure the width, um, and those will be things also, you can measure the, the actual size of an individual print. 
Um, and so those are some of the things that would be in um, Elbrock's book uh, too for the, diagn for the diagnostic. The other thing that um, once you start doing this, and, and again, going out with the fresh snow um, helps with this, especially a beautiful powder like this, is you get these little um, skids, I guess. Um, and this can help you figure out what direction the animal's going. And so here's an animal moving away from the camera. Um, the, other, the other thing that you can use is where is the, where is the um, track the deepest? Um, and these tracks are the deepest, like right here at this front edge. So it's kind of coming in, um, the, uh, a foot is kind of skidding into this hole. Um, and then it's deepest here. So it's moving in this direction. And then you got that same animal going to my garage and then coming back from my garage to its little burrow, okay? So it's Ile Vuelta in Spanish, right? It's coming and going, um, or it's going and coming, whatever you wanna say, okay? So that information is there. That's kind of cool. And this is some of that, um, snow that's pushed up when the animal is moving at the snow ground interface. Okay, so you got the snow ground interface um, and that's the subnivian niche. Okay, so that is, uh, um, maybe I'll come back to that a, a little bit later, but you can see the snow kind of um, uh, pushed up here and then it pops out, digs under a little bit, pops out and then it starts loping, okay. And so that's a meadow vole, very classic meadow vole um, uh, track. Okay, gray squirrels, this is gonna be something that you have um, in Milwaukee. Pay attention to where the tracks are located too, right? So I've got a red oak tree in my backyard and at the base of the red oak tree, it's full of tracks. I know I have resident red squirrel or uh, gray squirrels in my red oak tree. Um, I see their nests. Um, and a lot of times you'll see, if you've got resident squirrels, you'll see the tracks radiating out, right? Radiating, radiating outward from that, from that um, um, home tree, okay? It's even better if you see the squirrel and then go out and look at the print because then you know it, you have what a botanist call a search image or a mushroomer. If you've ever done mushrooming and you're looking for morels, people that have never done that, like, it's like, how did you find that? It's like, well, if you do it enough, you get what's called a search image in your brain and you know what to look for. Um, birders as well. It's like, you know, um, know how to do things like spot a bird in a tree and then get their binoculars up um, and respot that bird. It's just, it's just, a learned behavior. So search images are something else that's important uh, concept in tracking. Here's a squirrel sitting in the snow. When you go out in um, and look, you've got, okay, here's its hind feet and here's a body print, okay? Um, and that makes sense when you understand like how a squirrel will sit in the snow. Um, and then it'll, then it'll jump, it'll lope. And then you've got like the front feet here and the hind feet here. And then you've got the skids. So you've got a direction of travel um, as well. Um, I was sitting having lunch with my wife and I saw a squirrel come from under my deck. So I, I ran out and I took this picture. Um, and here's a squirrel. This is a, I'm sorry, I gave you the answer. Um, I'm a terrible teacher. Um, but what two animals are shown here? Well, we've got one here uh, and then one here. And this is a squirrel foraging. So it's looking for the acorns and nuts that it's buried, right? Um, then I've got another animal here, which at first glance looks like that meadow vole, but when I started measuring it, it's like two inches, a good two inches larger um, than the meadow vole um, tracks. Um, and so it's, I think it's either a chipmunk or that 13 line ground squirrel. Now, I don't know how many of you, I, I, I will raise my hand um, on this when I was a student I thought when a chipmunk or a ground squirrel went into hibernation, that it went in in like October and then it didn't wake up until April, right? That it was just hibernating. 
um, I was surprised to find out that they come in and out of hibernation all year. And sometimes they're even active like outside. They'll come out of their burrows and um, do a little foraging, go to the bathroom, whatever it might be. Um, and so you might pick up chipmunk in January or December um, as, a, as a print or that 13 line ground squirrel. They're the same size, so I really can't tell um, which it was. I could tell if I saw where it came from. If it was under my back screen porch, which is a great big thermal mass because of the, the concrete, which is where my chipmunks live, um, that would be the chipmunk. If it came from somewhere in the yard, that's where all the burrows of the 13 line ground squirrels are. So um, based on where this is, I'm thinking it's a 13 line ground squirrel. Um, deer. We've got a lot of deer that come through the backyard. Uh, and so this is just a run. It's called a deer run. So it's just um, a deer that just kind of ran through the backyard. Um, it's easy to tell it's a deer because deer are even-toed ungulates. They're artiodactyls. Uh, and so you get the two hoof prints here. You get the two hoof prints here. Um, the deer was moving in this direction. I've got a squirrel. It's crossing a pass with path with a squirrel that's moving in that direction um, uh, again. So let's look at some more. <laughs> so here's, um, again, I was like, uh, this is just too much going on. But I know these are, um, I've got seven Norway and Colorado blue spruce trees uh, planted as a um, is a living fence uh, for a parking lot, a student parking lot that's right there. And there's lots of stuff going, lots of squirrels, red squirrels, gray squirrels, and Eastern cottontail rabbits. Uh, so there's a lot of activity under here. So it was really hard just to figure out what is what here. So it's like, okay, it's very active. Um, it's a happy place for everything in my backyard, um, but it's hard to distinguish like what's what. Um, so. Um, isolated tracks are a little bit better. Going back to where the animal is, um, the rabbits, if you pay attention to the rabbits around your house, they tend to kind of like stay close to my house. You know, so they're, um, they're not running, they can't climb, so they're not going to be near the oak trees. Um, they're going to be under those spruce trees, and when they're out and about, they're going to be close to cover. So they're, this is running right next to my house, um, it's going to have, um, you do get a body print. Um, if it's sitting down, you get small front feet, you get large hind feet. Um, uh, but it has a very similar gait, um, as, a, a squirrel when it's moving slowly, when it's moving quickly, it's a little bit different. Okay. So this is just, an, this is just a squirrel moving slowly, or I'm sorry, a rabbit moving slowly in this direction along my house. Okay. Now, I got a lot of food in my backyard if you're a predator. Um, and so I've got a couple of neighborhood cats um, that move through. And um, in the summer, I just throw shoes at them. Um, I'm sorry if you're a cat person. Um, I don't like outdoor cats. Um, mostly because I found a dead brown thrasher in my backyard and I was really angry. But anyway, I'm getting into the woods here. Here's a squirrel track. But I've got a I've got a cat um, I'm moving through the yard here, uh, and again um, there's two sets of prints here. One is moving away from the camera, and then one is moving towards the camera. So the cat moved through my yard in one direction and then went home. Excuse me, um, I'm burping in the other direction. Um, so here's a here's a quiz. Let's see if I can uh, do this. So here's a uh, two sets of cat patterns. Um, which direction is this cat moving? Towards or away from the camera? Okay, I've got a 50-50 um, right now. Again, we're looking at this, um, yeah, it's a little bit, it's a little bit, I, I would say it's not super clear. Um, this one's actually clear, 
right? This one is clearly moving, well, more clearly moving towards the camera. Um, and this one, like if I look at this track here, this track here, this one's moving away from the camera. So this cat went left around my oak tree, went through my neighbor Steve's yard, and then came back toward the camera around the tree this way, okay? Um, and, um, and I know which cat it is, it's this gray cat. Anyway. Um, dogs. Um, this I, I just took like on the way over to uh, my office this morning. Um, just absolutely beautiful uh, prints when you've got slush with a, a snow cover. I mean, these are, you know, really good. But you, you see the, the footfall patterns. Okay, so here's a, um, the right hind, right front, left hind, left front, almost on top of uh, um, top of one another. Um, and then you can figure out the size of the dog if you know the distance um, between this. Um, and this is just a casual walking dog, right? So they're just casually going for a morning walk. Um, and so beautiful, you know, just a nice, uh, beautiful print. Um, here's one I took that same morning as I, the other pictures. Um, and so this is one foot. So I just took, uh, I took my ruler um, and then just measure, this is one foot, this is six inches, the dog is moving in that direction. Um, but it's a, it's a dog this big, it's a tiny dog. Okay, so that's a tiny dog um, um, that's moving. It's probably my neighbor's dog, because like, he's got a really small dog. Um, here's a, 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 just another dog walking um, picture. Now, if you forget your ruler, um, this is kind of a fun fact, the average human foot is about 12 inches or one foot. And I think that's just so weird that that's like um, such a coincidence that that's what it is. Uh, so you can just use your foot. Um, if you know, like I'm a size nine, men's nine, which is almost exactly, I think whoever came up with this was a men's size nine because my foot's about 12 inches. So, uh, so I can just step um, um, and use my foot as a ruler um, I took this and I just copied and pasted it and paint next to here so that these two prints together are about one foot. There's a little distance between. Here's another foot. So I've got a dog maybe about that big, okay, um, here. So, uh, so you can kind of estimate direction of travel um, um, as well as relative size um, of the dog. Um, all right, so my backyard um, is right there. All those pictures I was just showing you um, are right there. I live very close to campus. Uh, the spruce trees are dividing me from lot Q here. Um, these are the student dorms. Um, these are the intramural fields. This is where the women's soccer team plays and I go over and watch them. Uh, men's rugby is here. My office is here. That's where I am right now. Uh, but I'm only a block from Schmeekly Reserve, if you've ever been on our campus. And so um, this is part of my extended backyard. So when I go for a walk, I'll go for a walk um, here. Um, and I don't know if you guys got the hoarfrost that we got last week. I think you did, because I got some friends down there on Insta and they sent some pictures too, but we had that freezing fog. Um, uh, so it's just a beautiful, uh, peaceful place to walk. The way that the lake froze this year was perfect for hockey and ice skating. So this has been a huge um, ice skating rink uh, for the community as well this year. And you see lots of tracks, okay. Um, all right, here's a question. Uh, we'll see if anyone knows this. Um, so I was just kind of walking here and I came to a divergence in the woods and I had to decide which way to go. Uh, which way should I go? Thank you. Everyone that said right um, is, is right. You take the path less traveled, right? So I, I took the one. Crap, I forgot the way the poem went. Um, yeah, so you take the one that's less traveled. And so you can see here that this one's a more heavily traveled path than this one is. And so, um, 
you see the same thing if you're if you're in the woods. You can you can look for um, game trails. You can look for animal runs, um, and 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 animals are going to um, you know have paths that they that they have through the woods as well. Okay, so uh, looking for those runs is something else that you could be um, uh, doing when you're out uh, tracking. Then you can ask the next question: Is like, what's so great about that path? Okay. So I was in Schmeekly, and there's a, a something called the reflection pond. So it's like a small pond. Uh, the pond was um, icing over, uh, and it had just a little dusting um, of um, snow on it. And I saw this bunch of just beautiful tracks. Um, and so I just snapped this picture. And I think that's what Ethan was talking about is taking some pictures of tracks um, for, for iNaturalist. Um, these would be some good candidates um, for that. Uh, but so, so I've, got some, I've got some pictures. Um, and, uh, and so here's, here's an animal uh, that's kind of got a weird, it's kind of weird. But if you read Albrecht's book, you recognize right away that these are bound patterns. Um, and so this is an animal bounding. Um, one animal or two, I don't know, but this animal is moving in this direction. This animal is moving in this direction. So they're kind of crossing paths. These are the front feet um, as they hit. And then these are the hind feet where it's launching in this direction. Front feet here, hind feet here, launching in this direction. Um, and so it looks a little bit small for um, a rabbit, but that would be a very, a very typical rabbit moving at a relatively fast rate of speed um, would be a bound pattern like that. Um, but these were my favorites. Oh my gosh, these, these two sets of patterns here um, are pretty, um, very likely um, short-tailed weasel. Um, or ermine. Um, and so you've got a um, cluster of four here, and then it's loping, and then there's a cluster of four here. It's probably moving under a bridge at this point because there's a, there's a, a walk, um, a walkway here. Um, and so that looks like an ermine lope. Um, uh, very different than some of the other things that we've seen. Um, and then this is also uh, a little bit different than what we've seen. Definitely a carnivore. But I don't know. The other thing about this is, um, at first appearance, this looks like the same animal, but this animal is moving in this direction. This animal is moving in this direction. It's not like sidestepping. Um, and so it could be a pair of animals moving together. I don't know. Again, I don't have to be right. Point of the, the point isn't to be right. The point is to engage the tracks and to kind of question. It's like, this doesn't look like, these would be turned in this orientation if, this, if these two tracks were set down at the same time. And then I'd have a distance and then I could estimate the size of the animal. But I can't do that. I'd have to look for the tracks over here somewhere. Are there tracks here somewhere? I don't even know. I'd have to look for the, the matching tracks in, in this orientation to get, to get that size, but I don't see them. Um, how do I know I'm looking at a bound or a lope or um, a trot? Um, I didn't, well, I, I teach about gates, so I know a little bit, but really um, it's, it's, it's going back to Elbrock's book where he, where he talks about that. Um, and remember that bounding pattern I showed you in this, in, on, on just, just right before? It looks exactly like this. And so this is, um, and again, hares and rabbits aren't the only things that bound. Um, I would expect larger hind footprints in the bound of a, um, of a cottontail, for example. But it could have been a cottontail. Um, I, I don't know. I didn't see it. Uh, but that would be a bounding pattern, something that's moving quickly through that, through that area. Um, and then here's um, uh, lope patterns. And so uh, the transverse lope 
I would say if I had to classify that ermine um, pattern, I would classify it as a transverse slope. It looks mostly, most like that. Um, and then trots. Um, uh, carnivores, um, like that carnivore pattern, which I, I couldn't quite show you, uh, was more of a trot. It was an animal that was moving slowly through. That cougar that I showed you earlier was a direct register trot. Um, you see a lot. Uh, the, the earlier dog that I showed you just walking in the slush looked like a, a side trot like this where you had sets of prints like this. That was a side trot. Um, all right, so here's a quiz. Um, what do you think made this pattern? Hey, Chris, while people are, are guessing here, were those figures um, as a part of the, the book that you mentioned? Are you talking about the figures of the different um, gates and, and I patterns? So. I believe. Yeah, so. those are in here. Okay. Um, that I, I basically have screenshots of because I bought the. Um, actually, you know what? If you have a Kindle, um, if you get the free um, sample of this book, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll just tell you this: if you get the free sample of this book on Kindle. Um, it includes those gate patterns. Nice. So you can get the gate patterns. Thank you. So yeah, that's kind of cool. All right, a lot of people are saying vol, vol, yep, vol, yep, thanks. Okay, so yeah, that, this is a, a I, I, when I saw this, it made me smile. I mean, I was like, here's a vol that is just swimming its way through the snow and having a good old time. Uh, and makes this good pattern. I see these exact same patterns in, in grass in the summer, uh, just kind of a meandering, um, a meandering pattern, okay? Um, but again, if I kind of backtrack, so I, I found that and then I went back to find the source of that. And, um, and here I can see where it started pushing up. So it's probably got a burrow um, over here. Um, because this snow isn't deeper. This is, this is all one, a one inch snowfall and then I went out tracking. Um, and so it started pushing up. So the burrow's probably right there. It started pushing up and then you get that nice tunnel and now it's on top of the snow and then it'll just either kind of push through it or it'll lope um, depending on it. If the snow is really deep, and now this is, this is an important ecological thing because um, one thing that we know about voles um, and lemmings is that they cycle. Um, and so you get these, um, in Spanish it's called a ratata. I love the term ratata. It's an explosion of mice. And this summer we had a ratata, we had an explosion of mice going back to that masting year that I told you about in 2019. Lots of food on the landscape. So when all of us went out trapping this summer, we found lots of mice. And that ex probably explains why we had a mouse in the house this year um, when we haven't for a lot of years, because there were just like lots of mice out there. Um, now with voles, if you go into the winter with a large vole population, uh, you want to pay attention to the snowfall, the snowpack, um, because if you get a really good snow cover and then not a lot of thawing throughout the year, you have what's called a, a pretty healthy subnivian um, and voles can survive down there under the snow. If you get a good snow, if you get no snow cover, um, that's not gonna insulate the ground at all and you get a lot of vole die off. Um, and what's even worse is if you get snow cover followed by melt, snow cover followed by melt, then you get a lot of ice at the snow ground interface. It's more of an ice ground interface and that's gonna have um, really negative um, impacts on the vole community. And then you come out in the spring with low vole survivorship. But if you had a really good winter, um, like we did in I think it was 2014, 2015, I went out to um, trap voles and we had, I think I trapped 800 voles in three weeks um, at the, um, uh, Buena Vista grasslands, which is where, you, if you've ever seen prairie chickens, um, come up here for that. That's where you go to see the prairie chickens. 
Um, so yeah, knowing the subnivian, um, here's a carnivore direct register trot coming towards the camera. Um, here's where the print is the deepest. This is probably a red fox, um, it would be my guess based on the size on uh, the way it's moving through the landscape. But the foot's coming down in here, it's deepest here. So it's moving toward the camera um, in a direct register trot. Okay, again, so one foot on top of the other. All right, so um, just to wrap up, um, I recommend um, kind of keeping a trapping journal or a, a, a tracking journal, right? Um, and you can keep that as a, as a hard copy journal where you go out with a pen and paper and you sketch things and you take your measurements. But the technology is so good now and it's actually better to keep a digital journal um, because you get the metadata, right? So if you take a picture on your phone um, and go to the information uh, tab, it gives you all this data and, and including um, it geotags it, right? And so um, these tracks um, are from here in Schmeekly. Uh, and if I click on that, I can actually get, excuse me, the lat long uh, coordinates um, of that deer track. I've got the date and the time that I took that. Uh, and so I can keep a digital photo journal um, and have all that metadata um, there as well. Uh, and again, iNaturalist relies on that metadata. Um, when, you, uh, when you upload um, a picture to iNaturalist, it actually maps it, right? Uh, so you've got a date and a time um, associated with that. Um, and then if you forget a ruler, um, I've used um, a measure, measuring apps on my phone or my iPad. And so you just turn on your measurement tool. Um, you click um, on one thing, you move your device and you click on another and it'll give you a measurement. Uh, and so that's kind of a cool thing. There's um, Android versions and Apple versions of, of measurement tools. All right, that is the end.